guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to the channel on this channel we cover all things reality tv news and gossip and here lately we have been keeping up with the mama june saga as you guys know mama june's oldest daughter anna chickadee cardwell passed away from adrenal carcinoma cancer back on december 9th and um since then it's kind of been a lot it's been a lot going on whenever anna first passed away of course anybody you know feels bad for the family they're like oh my god this woman just lost her daughter like her or not uh you know june used to have a lot of fans um even like last year i know i still was a pretty big fan of the show and the family until alana mama june's youngest daughter her boyfriend got arrested and I seen how the family acted and how they treated their fans. And I started seeing how they behaved on TikTok and how they talked to people and how they, you know, parented their kids. And it was just a lot. And I was like, holy crap. So um, even though, even though I stopped really being fans of the show, I felt horrible whenever Anna passed away because at the end of the day, that's her, her daughter. So I thought, wow, I, I know this got to be tough. Um, but very quickly after Anna passed away, I started seeing that June was not following Anna's wishes in regards to a lot of things about her life. And June even admits these things whenever June says, whenever June planned the services, she said, you know, Anna wanted us to do a live stream and just go live during the services so her fans could kind of be there because the last probably, well, 10 months of Anna's life, she had become pretty active publicly. Now, if you guys remember, Anna wasn't that public uh, any other time. Like, yes, she was on Here Comes Honey Boo Boo for a little bit, but she moved off. She got married. She lived a pretty quiet life <laughs> until the Here Comes Honey Boo Boo show got canceled due to June reconnecting with Mark McDaniel, which was the guy who went to prison for R-A-P-I-N-G, Anna. Anna came out to discuss that with Dr. Phil, with Dr. Drew. She did an inter a few interviews just discussing the fact that, you know, her family's uh, hit TV show had gotten canceled due to, you know, her mama reconnecting with a man that was put in prison for assaulting her. She talked about that. She talked about how she appeared on the show but was never paid for the show, how she had like a trust fund that her mom spent. Um, but other than that, she lived a pretty quiet lifestyle, only coming back after she found out she had cancer. And from what I was told, there was a couple of reasons Anna came back. She was asked to come back by June. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I still have like a cold, like deep in my chest. <clears throat> and it's like a tickle to my chest. I just can't get rid of it. Um, <laughs> so she was asked to come back by June. Um, and also she decided to come back because she wanted to kind of bring awareness to this cancer. It came on so quickly. You know, she was fine one day and the next she finds out she has stage two, stage two cancer. And then, you know, two months later, she finds out she has stage four cancer. So she wanted to bring awareness. So that's why she kind of started doing the show. She started doing TikToks like every night, pretty much. And had gotten really close to the people that followed her on TikTok. She became really good friends with several of the people that followed her on TikTok. So I do think Anna wanted to, because she was, so inclusive with her friends fans she felt like it was only fair to give them something as far as her services so she wanted her services to be live stream you know for a little bit set it up for an hour live stream so her friends felt like they were there but june said blatantly anna wanted us to live stream but we're not going to do that we're going to allow you guys to come which if anna already set hey, just live stream it so the people can feel like they're there. When you invite people to a funeral, you don't even know who's going to be there. Anna's children were there. You know, like, yeah, I don't think Anna would have made it either way. But very early on, I started seeing that June was not honoring Anna's wishes. And then when she kept Caitlin and I started speaking to my sources, people that I've talked to for, you know, over a year now telling me this is not what Anna wanted. Anna did not you know, Anna did not want June to keep Caitlin. Anna wanted her family to be able to see the kids, but she wanted the kids to kind of go back to the routine that they, the routine that they had. And I know the show is coming on and I do know there's going to be something in the show that's going to lead it to look like 
and I wanted June to have Caitlin. I do know there's going to be something in there unless they edit it out. There's going to be something that it, it appears to be that Anna is implying that. But I was also told that June really pushed Anna for this. Like, why don't you let me keep Caitlin? Why don't you let me keep Caitlin? And, and she told her several times, like, well, no, you know, like, they, they, they go to this school, they're on this routine, you know, like, of course, you guys will already always be able to see Caitlin and Kylie, but I really want, she really wanted Michael and Eldridge to have the girls and keep that routine. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, I know there's going to be something on the show, but I was told that June really pressured Anna a lot and Anna really started getting worried that she was going to make her mom mad. And at the end of the day, Anna did not know, like, for sure how far, how, how long she had, but she wanted to make amends with everybody. That's why when she found out, she reached out to her family. That's why she made amends with people, you know, because she knew that more than likely she would not be there in about five years, right? So I was told by several people, too, that even though Anna has been estranged from June, she always really wanted her mom in her life, she, but she always wanted her mom to do the right thing. She was just so hurt by her mom not doing the right thing. That's what led her to separate herself from her mom. But she always really had this desire to have that close relationship with her mom. So either way, basically, she she told her mom no several times what she wanted. And then it started getting to the point to where she was like scared to keep saying anything, you know. Um, so I don't know. There's going to be something. Um, but I still think what we're going to see you got, I think we're still going to be able to tell that Anna was under pressure when she says whatever it is that she's going to say. Because June says she's going to say something and I think she's going to say something, but I don't think she's going to come right out and say, yes, mom, I want you to keep Caitlin. I think it's going to be something more along, along the lines of just whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like something like that out of frustration. So it's been a lot going on. Mama June filed for custody right after Anna passed away. In her document, she said that you know, Anna's mom passed away, that Anna's dad was never in the picture, which is true. He's never been in the picture. Um, her dad is, you know, according to Anna, Caleb Clark, he has come forward to sign a form just saying, I acknowledge that I'm Anna's dad and I am stepping back from this to let the proceedings go forward. Um, I've also been told that Caleb, Anna's dad, uh, uh, Caitlin's biological dad is in full support of Michael having Caitlin. Michael being the, you know, the dad that Caitlin knew all these years um, outside of Eldridge, whenever Eldridge came in the picture, you know, a few years back. So, anyways, uh, she filed for the custody saying that there was nobody else that was interested, that there was nobody else. My daughter passed away. She has this child. Her dad's unknown, not around, and there's nobody else that wants her. So I'll take her. And the judge temporarily gave her custody of Caitlin with a, you know, saying we'll have we'll have a court date where if anybody else is interested, they can come forward. Now, at the same time, or even I think the day before, Michael Cardwell had filed for custody of Caitlin as well. Michael is Kate Caitlin's the only dad that she's ever known outside of Eldridge. Um, and then he is Kylie's dad. So Michael and Anna married years ago whenever Kylie, whenever Caitlin was um, less than two. She was about to be two when they got married. He raised her as he is. Even up until Anna passed away, he got Caitlin and Kylie every other week. He paid for their schooling. He was dad. She called him dad. Both girls called him dad. I mean, they had a great relationship. Caitlin had a great relationship with not only Michael, the man that she called dad, but with Michael's fiance, with her grandmother on that side, with all of her family on that side. And she considered those people family, whatever the case may be. Um, June had, you know, June has not allowed Caitlin to see Michael or Michael's family. She has allowed Eldridge to see Caitlin from my understanding, but she's not allowing Michael, which is kind of understanding a little bit, uh, a little bit, because in the same sense, Michael has Kylie. Now, I will say, June, from what I've been told, still has not texted Michael herself to say, how is Kylie? I would like to see Kylie. Pumpkin has, from my understanding, from what I've been told, Pumpkin has texted Michael 
and said, hey, can I get Kylie? I would like to take Kylie somewhere. Can Kylie come do X, Y, and Z? And Michael, from my understanding, has said like, well, we can go do something together with the kids. Uh, but I don't think anything else is a good idea, like going to stay the night or anything like that. And from what I have found out through talking to people that I know, people, you know, uh, there's a lawyer up in Georgia that I talked to that I know through my husband who was raised in Georgia. Nothing to do with the case. He's not associated with the case. I just told him about it. He said, usually when there is a custody battle, lawyers will instruct their clients to not allow the child to go off by themselves with the child because sometimes people can influence the children. They'll ask questions like, hey, so what, you know, do you know what they're doing? Like, do you know what the plans are? Like, are they trying to keep you from me? Or they'll, they'll say, well, you need to tell your dad X, Y, and Z. So usually they are told by their attorneys, you know, if you want to let them see the child, fine, but they need to come to your house or y'all need to do things together. And I think that's what Michael's doing, just following probably what he's been told by his attorney. Um, because I haven't been told that Michael has agreed to let Pumpkin see Kylie. It's just been not let her take Kylie off. Um, in the same sense, I, from my understanding, Michael and his people have reached out to June wanting to see Caitlin, wanting to send messages to Caitlin like, hey, can you just tell her we love her? Can you just tell her we miss her? And they have not hold, heard anything back, really. It's been very minimum that, that June has even responded. You know what I'm saying? Like, from my understanding, there's been family members in June's chat, in Justin's chat, and they get blocked when they speak up. When they say, hey, can you tell Caitlin this? Block. You know what I'm saying? Like, immediately. So, anyways, there's this court battle that is about to take place. Not sure. I was going to say, I'm not sure how June even wound up with temporary custody of a child due to the fact that she, I think she's a convicted felon. I think she's on probation. If she's not, she was. She did not raise her own kids. Her own daughter, Pumpkin, filed, you know, to get custody of Alana back when Alana was younger and even said, I don't feel like Alana is safe with her. Alana even said, I want to live with my sister because that's where I feel safe. That's who takes care of me. And yes, I want to see my mom, but it should be supervised and my sister should be there. So a lot of people's like, how did June end up with temporary custody? Well, it was just a thing because, you know, the, the courts didn't really look into it. But when they do look into it, I do think it's going to be like, what the heck? And I don't think June's going to end up keeping custody, which I think June should consider. You know what? What if I do lose custody of Caitlin to Michael? I could at least try to be a little uh, civil with these people because it's a possibility that I could lose custody of her. And if they treat me the way I've treated them and not even talk to them at all, well, then I'm not going to have, I'm not going to get to have anything to do with my granddaughter. Anyways, court date. There is a court date, you guys. So um, there's a court date for April 16th. It will be like the hearing where. Michael will have to plead his case and June will have to plead hers from my understanding. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I do plan on going. I'm trying to make plans uh, to go to that hearing. Also, you would think with June trying to get custody, permanent custody of her granddaughter, she would be careful with, you know, the things that she say, she says on social media, the way that she behaves on social media, but she's still not. And I do agree, Leisha, April is too far away. Now, from my understanding, there was like scheduling conflicts or like that, that's like the soonest they could get it on the calendar, you know, on the docket. But I agree. April is way far away because keep in mind, like Caitlin is not getting to see her dad and that side of the family. And I also feel like they are influencing Caitlin, not just with Michael, but I think I think everyone. I think June and Justin have influenced Caitlin, I, sources tell me, but that they have her convinced that this is what her mom wanted. You know, even when people say like, well, what, don't you want to live with so-and-so? She's like, well, well, my mom wanted me to do this. So my mom wanted me here. This is what my mom wanted. And I feel like she's really being convinced of this. And there's so much that like a child goes through at that age anyways. And even more so when you lose a parent, you just don't know if you're going or coming, which way is up, what the right thing to do is, what you know what I'm saying? So we're going to watch a video because June went live on TikTok last night and it was just 
ridiculous. And it's one of those things that I feel like if any judge with any sense of morals was to watch it, would say, like, if I was a judge and I, that these two were in my courtroom, June and Michael, and I watched this TikTok of June, I would be like, you know what? No, you are not fit to have this girl in your care, to talk like that in front of her, to include her in, in discussions like this. Heck no, you don't even need to see your grandchild unless you're supervised by her dad, Michael, because it is so, the way that she was talking last night was just so disgusting. And not only was she saying things in front of Caitlin, but she was including Caitlin in, you know, the, the, the chatter of it. Um, so we're going to watch it. It's a TikTok where June was on last night. Um, there's a lot of cursing. There's also some bits in there. Like there's one part where um, June says something about Kylie's dad and Caitlin says, oh, he ain't my dad though, which tells me right there because this girl has called Michael dad since she could speak almost. Thank you so much. So, thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you. I'll put that in my little piggy bank for when I go. That's my spending money. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> this girl has called Michael dad, loved him like her dad, loved his family, called his family, you know, grand, my grandparents. She Very close relationship with Michael's parents, from what I'm, I've been told, with Michael's fiance. So she's always been super close to the side of her family. But now all of a sudden she's making a comment like, oh, that's not my dad. And when I was talking to Sean about it, my husband, I said, you know, I feel like they are convincing her. This ain't your daddy. This ain't your daddy, you know. And he said, you know, probably so. But also she may be feeling this way because her mom has been deceased almost two months at this point. And it's being made very clear that there's a difference between her and her sister Kylie concerning Michael. You know, she always considered Michael her dad, but her mom dies and all of a sudden she can't see this man. But her sister's living with him. So maybe she, you know, they are influencing her, I definitely think. But I definitely think it's one of those things where she's like, well, I mean, I guess he's not my dad because look, I can't, I can't even go visit him. I'm not even getting to go see him. And I think that's something they're stopping, obviously, and they're not allowing, and they're not allowing him to even really talk to her. But that made a lot of sense with my husband saying that. Like, oh, she is seeing now more than ever that there's a difference there. Whereas before, she never did. She went to her dad's every other week. She lived that life of L's piggy bank. Ooh, thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Um, I don't understand why Michael can't file an emotional emergency. If you file an emotional emergency because you're worried about the child's welfare, which the judge, the judge was. I'm not sure. I can tell you from my understanding, it's been expressed, you know, like we need to get this done ASAP. Um, so I just don't know. So we're going to watch June's TikTok from last night. Keep in mind, there is very foul language. If you are eating, don't watch. Calls, watch when you're done eating because it is disgusting. And if you want to know what pink is, when she says, I, I, I'm going to show you guys some pink, she is meaning her vagina. When somebody says, like, oh, you want to see the pink? They're talking about, if a woman says it, they're talking about their vagina. Okay. So in this, that she starts saying, like, oh, if we can get 150 shares, I'll show you guys some pink. Saying her vagina. I did put um, closed captions on it so you guys can see it, but let's go ahead. Let's watch. Again, foul language. You know, ear pods, headphones, something, and don't watch if you're eating. All right, let's see. So at the beginning, there's some background uh, chatter that I that, that I picked up at first. Also, this is very loud. I increased the volume very, like, I increased it pretty loud. So just beware. You might want to just kind of hold your your earbuds away or kind of hold the phone away just to kind of get a, a feel of how loud it's going to be. Um. Oh yes, Caitlin was not only. Not only was Caitlin in there, but Caitlin joined in the chatter with her about, the, you know, like, oh, uh, first Caitlin told her, don't say that. That's disgusting. You know, you shouldn't say that, June. But then she joined in the chatter with her um, like they were two girlfriends. And it was like, wow. So anyways, um, let's watch. No. Okay, th that, that was the beginning that I heard where it's somebody in the background saying, oh, Mama June will love this. This looks sexy. And I couldn't understand what was said. And then right after that, Caitlin starts talking, it sounds like. So I don't know if Justin is, 
watching something on TV <laughs> where they're showing clothes. And he's like, oh, Mama Ju would love that. She would look sexy in that. And Caitlin chimes in. I don't know, but you guys listen to that real quick. No. Nobody cares about you either. No, we have not seen Callie since Anna has passed since Anna's funeral. He tells us no. We saw pumpkin no. First off, I will say I've been told that June herself has not asked. And when Pumpkin has asked to see Kylie, she has been told, yes, you can see her. You can come here or we can go do X, Y, and Z together. He only has said, I don't think it's a good idea for her to go stay the night or for you to like take her off by yourself. And from what I'm being told, that was at the advice of his attorney, more than likely. <laughs> Yeah, that's about what my net worth is worth. It's about fifty thousand. I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, so I've been live for ninety minutes, and I need to take a break. It says. <laughs> it is what it is. It ain't what it ain't. Thank y'all for so that it is what it is. It ain't what it ain't was her responding to when they said that's sad. You should be able to see your grandchild. And her response was, it is what it is. It ain't what it, it ain't what it ain't. It doesn't really sound like she cares much. Right. And I don't know for sure if that was Justin. I assume that was Justin that said that. And for me turning up the volume as far as I could, that's what I made it out to sound like. You guys can, <laughs> you know, figure out if that's what you think it said. It's, as well and if you guys think that it was justin but that's what i what what i call for sure i'm alive shit alive out there's 12 almost almost there's 1100 people i should have 100 new shares on this board arrow over copy link 100 new shares on the board if you're in here if you also in here if you got a penny make sure you are doing the daily art means and the team braces up underneath exclusive in the gift box i should have 100 new shares on the board let's see how quick y'all get your 100 new shares 100 new shares and i'll show you my butt crack <laughs> Oh, um, mm. so I mean, a hundred new shares and daily heart means the daily heart means is right here or it's in the gift box underneath exclusive. <laughs> I'll show that book, right? Yeah, I had a hundred new shares. Yeah, what's up with you? Come on now, they need to sell new shares. Where's it at? Yes, the new show comes on this Friday, guys, on WeTV, Mama June Family Crisis. Come on, guys, the Daily Heart Me's and the Live Goals. Also, if you do a subscribe or the Live Goal, you get an automatic follow in this live. I told my little show my butt crack. I can get 100 new shares on board for 150 shares. I'll even show you some pink. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla, for subscribing. Also, you can already follow me, but subscribe. He is not. Look at all these shares. Let's go, baby. I'm going to show some butt crack and some pink. So the first time she said it too, Caitlin was like, what? Now Caitlin, Caitlin asked again, what? Now she turns to Caitlin and tells Caitlin specifically. Caitlin just asked, what? And she turns to her granddaughter and tells her what she said. Now, listen. I'm going to show some butt crack and some pink. Come on, guys. Let's go. Hunter new shit. 150. We're almost there. Watch. I'm going to show y'all some pink and y'all going to love it. Y'all going to. Colby. 
told me, I gave a warning. I said, if you are eating, put your food down or falls. <laughs> because girl, I know. I know. I love it when I show y'all some pee, baby. Oh, and when I show you that butt crack. Check show y'all some pee right now. No, 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 we're talking about that. I don't know what you're talking about, but still, it's disgusting, Jim. I shouldn't be saying that. So Caitlin walks up and says, I can show you some pink right now. June looks over and is like, nah, 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 and she puts her pink necklace bag in front of the camera, obviously showing her pink necklace bag. And then June says, that's not what I'm talking about. And she says, I know that's what you're not. I know you're not talking about that. That's disgusting. You shouldn't talk like that, June. I'm going to back that up so you guys can hear that. Some pink, baby. And when I show you that butt crack. Should I also pink Okay. Hold on a minute. Sorry, I had to check somebody by it. Yeah, she can see my nail. I actually let my nail tech do whatever she wants to do. So they can do whatever. So I deal on that. Hey y'all. <laughs> That is Anna's oldest little girl. Come on now. We're going to show some pink and we're going to show some butt crack. We almost had 150 things. If you want to see Mama June butt crack, y'all better do it and Mama, show Mama June some pink on y'all. Y'all better keep sharing the live, sending the live goals and the daily art memes. Just to say it love me Whatever. They didn't want to eat ice cream with me. He said I have fast metabolism. They make the thing called the pants. Uh, 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 what? Don't much on now. <laughs> la, la, la. No, show him that. No, no, give him that. No. I'm giving this because it's a female. No, give me that. All right, y'all. She's showing pink. Come on now. Why is it? Come on now. Everybody needs to come here and do the daily heart oh, means. Oh, oh, the, the, the daily heart means and the hearts in the alive goal, guys. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God. The, the best. The best. The best. One throw away. Yeah. Thank you so much, moms. Y'all ready to see that butt crack? Yeah, stand up at house. No, I mean, I got a picture of my butt crack. We do? Yup. You didn't know I just showed you. <laughs> ah, yeah. Y'all ready to see that butt crack? Y'all ready to see that red and see that pink? Mama June going to show it all to you. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready for the butt crack? Mama June butt crack. We're going to be on ready tomorrow. Mama June showing that ass crack. She, let's try to get a thousand people in here to show that <laughs> ass crack too. She even closer though. I am. I'm at 912. She'll show some butt crap. Let's go. TMZ. Yeah, it be showing on TMZ on page six. It be every damn where. Because they like, I'm, I'm going to get ready for something good to write about, baby. Mama June, show her butt crap. I don't want to the kids. Yup. 
No, baby, I ain't leaving, you, baby. You, I just celebrated four years clean on this 27th, baby. I don't fucking worry about no goddamn fucking shit, okay? Yeah, baby. Thank yeah. you, and have a great day. I just pissed in a cup today. I pissed in that bitch every goddamn week. And I got four years clean, and it ain't because of them damn drug tests. I keep my own cell. Okay, so she, she said right here, I just took a drug test today which makes me believe and this is just my opinion i don't and i base it off the way that she acts but she has said before that the network makes her take random drug tests because she has a liability for them to have insurance on her she has to pass a drug test so i feel like and she also said she also said but it's random but they tell me ahead of time I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but I saw it and my phone has been going through this thing where I will set it to screen record, but it don't because my thing is full because my um, iCloud is full, right? So sometimes I'll literally sit there, let my phone record for an hour and then end it and it'll say it didn't say because your iCloud is full. This one, I literally recorded, but it didn't say where she literally admitted. She said, I do random drug tests. But they don't, but it's not random. Like they don't um, just pop it up on me. They tell me in advance. So I know when I'm going to take drug tests. I know days in advance, which tells me if you know when your drug test is, you can pass it. You can pass it. There's fake pee. There's tablets you can take. There's things you can drink. The only way I believe that you are sober is if you do a hair follicle drug test or a nail or something like that. I don't believe you were doing a urinalysis like i mean i believe you are and you're passing but not because you should in my opinion so this is what i feel say she they tell her two days in advance so she makes sure she's clean so she drinks whatever she can drink uh takes something you know so she only has to be clean uh the two days before she takes the test but now her saying oh i just took it today oh so you took it today and then as soon as you left my opinion you did something which is why you're acting cuckoo for cocoa puffs right now on this live like baby baby like i've never in my life seen a 50 something year old woman talk like a 10 year old like i've never in my so i literally i really think she, she well she's she's told us that they tell her a couple of days in advance and that it's not they don't just pop it up on her. She's told us that. So I really feel like she's able to pass by doing whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe so, Alicia, Alicia. But I feel like because she did one that day, then right after she, she left, she probably, and that's why she's literally probably like out of her mind right now, right there, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. She had one today. So as soon as she she got home and she had her party, you know? Place every now. No, I'm definitely not drinking. I don't, me or Justin, Kaylin, tell you, me and Justin do not drink. Give me a wine right here. No, you do not. <laughs> Sweet tea. I won't even tell him that. It's my wine. Don't say that for real. <laughs> okay so you ready no i don't it's not on paramount okay y'all ready for the ass crack the count, of, count of three i got a picture of that ass crack y'all ready one oh, everybody's saying ready Ooh. two tell me if you're ready Some tell me if you're ready man said ready y'all ready for that ass crack not really <laughs> I do have custody of Caitlin. I have custody of Caitlin, not Kylie. Okay, so here we go, guys. Ready or not? Here she comes. Oh. Now, praise God, she did not show us her butt crack. Um, she showed us obviously somebody you know somebody's rear end uh wearing some nice workout pants with a nice bubble butt 
thank God, because I was worried there for a minute. I was like, please, God, do not show us no your, your butt crack, June. Like, I have fears of what it looks like and smells like. So I don't I don't even want to know if my what I perceive it to probably look like is true or not. Um, so she just Googled like a nice book. If you really wanted to convince people, though, that it was yours, you probably should have looked up one that looks a little bit different. But still, she involved a child in this and she was looking at photos. And in a minute, Ka- uh, Caitlin's going to hold up the phone to show a butt, an exposed butt, and it looks like a man's butt. But earlier, she was looking through photos of a butt, and Caitlin was like, show them this one. She was like, no, I'm going to show them this one because it's a female. So I really do wonder. And later, because Caitlin brings the phone up, and it's a butt, that's really a butt, it makes me wonder what picture she was showing Caitlin when they were looking for one to, to show, you know? <clears throat> My husband's convinced she can't wipe her butt. I don't know. Um, um, her daddy has Kylie. Kaylin is Anna's oldest little not girl. My daddy, but okay. So yeah, her Kaylin, not my daddy, but okay. Which makes me think a couple of things. They are convincing her that that's not her daddy. My, mind you, this this girl has called this man my, uh, Michael. Her dad said she could speak pretty much. There's never been a time where she did not call him dad, and she loved him. I mean. She was so close to him and his family and his fiance. And so, I don't know. I just feel like she's gotten wrapped up in this crazy life. They've convinced her that this is what your mama wanted. This is what your mama wanted. I mean, she she is, Caitlin is being this way, not just with Mike on his side, but like kind of with everybody on the outside. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be, you know? And it's sad that they just won't be honest with her and let her be where she needs to be. Y'all want it? Y'all know that ass crack. All the old men watching. I don't want to tell a lot, but I'll tell you later. <laughs> Y'all, the BBL, baby. I got that BBL done. I'll tell you it later when I was, when I, was I really don't know who that girl was. I just looked up on the internet, so all y'all bitches who fell for it, uh, we made chili. I got, Stop. I got, I got it. Like, ugh. <laughs> well, I made chili. Well, I don't know who that is. I just looked up book cracks on the internet and gave y'all the best ass crack y'all could ever see. It sure wasn't my ass crack. Well, we know that, June. Of some random girl. Okay, so y'all ready for me to show y'all some pink? Because I can show show y'all some pink. I'm going to show y'all my pink, okay? And I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all ready to see some pink? So when y'all... Yeah, when when Caitlin was saying like, oh, I want to tell you something I'm not going to tell you on here. And uh, if you watch their lives, if you watch June and Justin, 90% of the time when Caitlin's walking around talking, they don't, don't, don't even acknowledge that she is speaking. I'm like, is she, who's she talking to? Is she talking to somebody else? Because they don't even look her way. They don't even like hold their hand up to let her know, hold on. They just don't even acknowledge that she's speaking. And then after a while of watching, you're like, no, yeah, she's talking to them. But <laughs> She's talking to them. They just don't even acknowledge her half the time. Y'all in the club, and that man says, show me that puss, or show me that pink, that pink spot. You know what you tell them? I've been doing this for a couple of years now. When people say, stop. There you go. Stop. That was Caitlin holding up the, the phone of an exposed butt. Look at that. Look at that. like a man's butt that was up on june's phone for whatever reason um i don't know if that was something that june brought up whenever they were trying to discuss what booty they were going to show the you know, show the viewers <clears throat> but the fact that caitlin had june's phone and had it up and they showed everybody yeah to me i don't know if you could consider that like exposing her to like cp or what but i just don't feel like it should it's not appropriate it's not appropriate at all but um anyway so when people be asking baby let me see that pink spot let me see it let me see it let me see it. you know what you tell them 
No. You know what you tell them? No. Baby, I'm going to show y'all some pink. No. Let's see if we can get 20 new shares on the board before I show y'all some pink. No. So what June is looking at right now, what she's live on, is the iPad. They usually go, they have like iPads that they go live on. Like a while ago, whenever June showed us the girl's butt, that was her phone. Um, so I'm pretty sure, I mean, it could be Caitlin's phone. I, I don't think, no, Caitlin doesn't have a phone. She has an iPad, I think. Yeah, Caitlin doesn't have a phone. She just has an iPad. Um, yeah, I've been told that she don't have a phone. It's just an iPad that she has. So that would have to be June's phone. Caitlin don't have a phone. iPad on. Her. Thank y'all for the daily harmonies. If you got a pin in your box, do the daily harmonies and the team bracelets up underneath the live go. Under, underneath the exclusive. I do speak clean English. You did gotta understand. You gotta understand. Somebody said, do you speak clear English? Not clean, which I mean, I guess, whatever. They said, can you speak clear English, like where we can understand you. And she thought they said clean, I guess. You got on a tan. What do you want? Oh, this? You want to buy you want to buy this? It is really good. I will tell you, I actually use coconut milk and it tastes fucking fabulous. I had a video about it. I did a video review about it. Thank y'all so much. See, I'm ready to see this pink baby, because I'm gonna give y'all some pink. My own pink. So y'all ready? So when you up in the club and then boys say, show me that pink spot, okay? You know what you do? You just say, okay. baby, baby, that's all the things you're going to get tonight. That's all the pink you're going to get tonight, baby. Because that cuckoo ready for somebody else. Y'all like that pink? I just showed y'all. No, Alana is not motherfucking pregnant. I don't know about Peacock. I honestly don't know. Okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know what Fala, uh, whatever she said. Not fabulous. Fa 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 I don't She's always messing up her words. It's always crazy. Um, she is out of control, which I'm like, I see June acting kind of crazy from time to time. But this was a little bit like she curses a lot, but like, the pink saying like I'm gonna show y'all the if, if, the P U S like if y'all ever in the club and they like I don't know what club you hang out in June but I ain't never been in the club and a guy just walk up to me and say show me your pink like if he did I'd be like uh, I'm gonna show you this drink right in your face you disgusting piece of crap like to talk like that in front of your grandchild is in June you're like you have a chance to break the cycle with Caitlyn but you're not you got pregnant at fourteen. Uh, Pumpkin got pregnant young. Uh, um, Pumpkin was a, you were a teen mom. Pumpkin was a teen mom. Anna was a teen mom. And while I disagree with a lot of the way that Anna raised the kids, I know she cursed and yelled too, and I did not like that. I, I don't agree. I know we're parents. Sometimes we're going to lose our mind and, you know, have bad days, and we might have a day where we yell. And I get that, and I can understand that. I have six kids. I mean, I've yelled at my kids. Not a whole, whole lot, but I have. And I always, it's, I've always felt bad about it. And I've always sat them down to talk to them to be like, that is my fault. You, you did not deserve when mama got loud with you. Like, don't think that you did. Even though, you know, you did some things that had me frustrated. There was a ton of other things that has this on mommy's mind that has nothing to do with you. And that's why I, I got loud with you. They don't, I don't, I didn't agree with Anna with the, the yelling and the cursing. It did not. But one thing that I've been told uh, is Anna treated them girls, you know, like made them act their age more than June has. Like she did not allow them to dye their hair. She did not allow them to wear jeans with holes in them. She did not wear them to wear like um, shirts with like vulgar language on it. Um, you know, things like that. Like um, Eldridge and Michael were a little kind of, you know, set rules in place uh you know for the girls to where it's like no they're too young for that so june you want to know why your children were teen moms it's because of crap like this you're talking about sex you know and things related to sex and and, and 
words like that. You are exposing her to something that she has no business being exposed to. And once you take a, a, a child's innocence and expose them to something like that, you can't take it back. And let me tell you guys something. I've been um, reading a lot into like um, how it affects a child to lose their mom at a young age. For one thing, I did read that, you know, children should not witness their parents die. Like you guys know how Anna passed away in the home and they all knew that it was probably going to happen. They, um, I read, you know, several, several, uh, several articles and stuff saying your child should, a child should never watch their parent die. Um, you know, obviously when you're older and your, your mom's in the hospital on life support, you know, that's different because you're older and you know how to, how to navigate that. But when you're young and you're still in your developmental stages, you don't know how to like deal with that you, you you shouldn't do it like i read there was nothing that i read that said yeah it's a good idea to let your child watch their parent die or for, to allow the child to watch the parent die <laughs> also when a um <clears throat> right leisha did anna move back in with june after she got pregnant with her oldest yes so whenever anna got pregnant with caitlin she was living with her grandmother where she had been living since she was eight years old she was dating Caleb and the show, June had got the show, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. They had not started filming yet. June wanted Anna to move back home because a couple of reasons. Anna was pregnant. June knew more than likely that that would make their show more entertaining to have teen pregnancy, you know, her daughter to be pregnant, you know, more drama, more entertainment. And also she, this is what I was told. Also, if Anna did not live with her, people would ask questions. Why don't your child live with you? Like, why do you have, why is your oldest live with your mom? <clears throat> you know, um, your mom, who you don't even talk to, by the way. She was scared people would dig to find out why. And the reason why Anna lived with her grandmother is because June's boyfriend aired her and June um, blamed Anna, accused Anna of lying saying, why would you do that to me? You know, he would never do that. You're a liar, blah, 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 blah. So that, that's why she lived with her um, grandmother. So, um, sorry guys, I was up way too late last night. Um, so she didn't want people to ask why and find out what happened with the Mark McDaniel situation. She also thought it would be good for television. And Anna even, even admits in some interviews that she didn't want to move back in with June, but she was pregnant. And June promised to buy her, her daughter, and her boyfriend a trailer. June told her, you only have to live here for about a year or so, and then I'll buy you a trailer. So that's that's why she did it. She she moved, she moved in, did the show, thinking she was going to make a little money, and she was going to get this trailer that it never happened. <clears throat> so losing your mom at a young age, there's so, it, it affects you in so many ways. Like, you guys know how they, they are complaining about her sleeping in the living room? Well, that's also like an effect from her losing her mom. Her mom died in the living room. She has not wanted to sleep like alone. Uh, she, at first, she slept in their room, but she hasn't wanted to sleep in her room. She slept in their room at first, and then she went to the living room. And the reason why is she feels safe in the living room because that's where her mom was. Um, so by forcing her to sleep in that bedroom, it can really have like psychological effects on her. Like this child is literally, it's, it's been two months, not even two months. And they're saying like, oh, we got to get back to normal. You can't keep sleeping in our room or in the living room. You got to get to your bedroom. You got to get back to normal. Like you're telling an 11 year old whose mom has not even been deceased two months, that it's time to get back to normal. She's struggling to sleep she's struggling on being comfortable where she sleeps the the place that she's most comfortable is in the living room let that girl sleep in the living room i'm sorry if you need to do your business maybe move it into caitlin's room since nobody's using it you know what i'm saying like i don't know i don't know but there's so many things another another effect of a child losing their mom at a young age is they can okay so unhealthy relationships um and it's due to growing up without the emotional support of a mom can prevent the child from understanding their feelings leading them to not being able to communicate the feelings properly because they don't even understand them commitment issues with friends with boyfriends girlfriends whoever because growing up without your mother's love and devotion you lack 
how to give that love and the devotion to someone else because you didn't have it, right? Also, you can, uh, depression, like all the studies that I've been reading up on, if you lose your mom at a young age, preteen, teenager, you are more likely to be depressed. You are more likely as a girl to get pregnant. You are more likely to seek, you know, like um, love and validation from someone of the opposite sex. She needs to be in therapy. Caitlin needs to be in therapy. She don't need to be walking around behind June and Justin's TikToks, listening to them complain about her and talk vulgar, vulgar like that. That is not going to do her any good. And another thing is like they want to complain about her sleeping in the living room and talking about we got to get back to a normal routine. What's your routine? Neither one of y'all got jobs. I mean, you know, outside of filming the show, y'all do TikTok, but y'all can do TikTok anytime you want to. So why not say, you know what? We wanted her. We wanted Caitlin. She's here. Now we're going to take care of her. We're going to get her in therapy. We're going to let her sleep in this living room as long as she needs to because she just lost her mom. She used to sleep in the room with her sister. Like, you know, like she used to have comfort in her, being in her home and being with her sister, her mom, and, and, you know, going to her dad's. And now she doesn't have that. So we're going to let her sleep in the living room until you know, give her a few more months, give her six months. And then maybe, I mean, six months is way better than less than two, one and a half and saying, you got to get back to normal, you know? So I don't know. I just think it's crazy that they have been going on for an hour. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, did the court give her to June only temporarily because June lied in her filing saying that Anna's mom died and Anna didn't have a dad and there was no other interested party. So she got her temporarily. But there is a court date on April 16th that I do plan on attending and hopefully we'll, we'll get more answers. June doesn't need nor does she deserve her. Caitlin deserves a better life than with those idiots. And one thing that I realized looking at all of Michael's photos and his fiance's photos of the girls, guess what they're dressed as? Little girls, cute little sunflower dresses, cute little dresses, little sandals. But June lets Caitlyn dress like like a teenager, teenager pants with holes all in them and, you know, big baggy sweatshirts and dyeing her hair, which whatever. But I'm just saying, I feel like June will allow her to grow up way too quickly versus Michael will keep her a child as long as possible and allow her to act like a child. You know what I'm saying? You follow your interaction. <laughs> Well, I, I'm like, I'm sure when pumpkin pies out, I'm going, she's going, she's going to go try to beat me up, but I'm bringing security. So it's okay. Um, as soon as you, as soon as I get, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, she's not even 30. She's 11. I mean, Kate, Caitlin is 11. So <clears throat> anyways, you guys, if you, if you want, I do have a PayPal cash app Venmo. If you want to send it there, if not, you can send super chats. Um, doesn't matter to me. Now YouTube does take like 40% of a super chat out, which whatever way is easiest uh you can do it whatever way is best for you but if you want to send it to paypal cash app venmo um i will get it all versus youtube taking half of it <clears throat> almost half of it uh yes built for the bs you can email me it's netnet216 at gmail.com oh thank you thank you dina Anyways, you guys, we're going to go ahead and close this one out. I've been going on for like an hour. I hope it was interesting and it'll keep everybody's attention on replay. Um, does Michael know about this TikTok? Yes. I was told by my contact that knows Michael um, that Michael is aware of it. So I'm sure his attorney has it. Um, and I'm sure they'll use it if need be. So um, I'm going to come back in a little bit. Janelle went ham recording my TikTok videos. And then she went on X, formerly known as Twitter, bragging about how she was going to take my TikTok down or something like that. I don't even know. And um, she'd been on one. She'd been on one uh, going uh, since yesterday, talking so much crap about me. She doxed me. She put up like an older picture of me, my birthday. Um, she blanked out my address. She was like, is this you? You know, like, I'm like, yeah, some of them. <laughs> it was like, it was like six or seven different names. Like maybe like four of them was me, but the other ones were not. Um, so we're going to cover that. I'm going to show you guys all her posts. I'm going to show you guys all the videos that she reported. Trying to get my TikTok taken down. 
She says she has a contact at TikTok and she was going to have me taken down. But so far, it's up. The TikToks that she reported, they're all back up. I had them back up within 10 minutes of me noticing they were down. So I'm, she's literally posted like manically over the past like 24 hours about me saying that she's going to sue me and blah, 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 blah. And what's so ironic is she's posting on her page and her posts are getting like 25,000 views and like 20 likes. I commented under her post and mine got like 15,000 views and 20 something likes. So even it's on her page and I'm getting more likes and more support than she even is on her own page. So it's so odd. Anyways, we'll talk about that in the next video. I'll be doing that in about 15 minutes or so, you guys. So make sure you join me back here in about 15 minutes to talk about this craziness with Janelle. I don't, I know she's got a lot going on in her life. So she mad. She mad. It is what it is. Like, share, subscribe. Let's try to get this account to 100,000 followers. I'm trying to hit 100K this year. Make sure you follow my other, other social media accounts and join me back here in about 15 minutes. Talk about Janelle. Big mad at me. I don't know. Bye, guys.